In this section, we are going to be learning about the inverse of a matrix, meaning what is it, why do we need it, and how do we utilize it. So the very first thing that we need to discuss is what is an inverse of a matrix? Well, this could actually mean one of two things. We have additive inverses and we have multiplicative inverses. So basically what an inverse or an identity property means is if we were to add one matrix to another and get back the original matrix, then that one that we added to is our identity property. So of course, in our additive identity, that's the zero matrix. Anything plus zero is itself. Okay, well, if that's what the zero does, then we need an inverse of that. Meaning, if I add two matrices, I need to be able to come up with the zero matrix. So of course, our additive inverse is just the negative scalar multiplied by our original inverse. Now this is really easy to do. All right, now when we talk about multiplication, I need to multiply a matrix times something to get my original matrix back. Well, we've already learned that that's our identity matrix where we have ones on the main diagonal and zeros every place else. Now we know that these can take on any dimensions, hence my sub n for n dimensions. The only qualification that we know is that this guy has to be a square matrix. So in this case, this is I sub three, but I could also have an I sub two or I sub five or I sub anything as long as it's a square dimension. Okay, well the question then is what do I actually multiply by to give me that I matrix? Well, that is A inverse, the inverse of a matrix. Okay, well we know there has to be such a thing, but what does it look like and how do we find it? Now if we're talking in the real numbers, right, if I wanted to take five times something to give me my inverse, which is just one, what would this be? Well in this case it would be the reciprocal of it, one over five or I would just divide by it. But notice I didn't actually teach you any matrix division because there isn't such a thing. And since I don't have a fraction format, I just can't take a reciprocal of a matrix. That doesn't make any sense as well. And so this is what this is going to cover, is what does the inverse of a multiplicative matrix look like, and how do we find it, and what good does it do? Okay, well, before we go into how do we find it, let's actually just verify some inverses. So we want to verify that if B is given to this matrix, that the inverse of it is that. So to verify it, we basically just need to work this property here. We need to multiply A times its inverse, and we need to do it the opposite way. Because remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. I cannot just switch the order and assume it be the same thing. So I have to take A times its inverse, and I have to switch the order, take the inverse times A, to confirm that I come up with the identity matrix. So I need to take B times A, and hopefully that gives me the identity matrix. And I need to take A times B. And if that comes up to the identity matrix as well, then that tells us that A is actually the inverse of B. So I suggest that you pause the video and have you do these matrix multiplications on your own. Okay, well the first one was B times A, so four, negative three, three, negative two, times negative two, three, negative three, four. This is a two by two, this is a two by two, my inner dimensions match, and I'm going to end up with a two by two matrix, okay? So I need to take this row times this column, so that's four times negative two plus negative three times negative three. Then I need to take this row times this column. So it gives me four times three 
plus a negative 3 times 4. Then I do this row times this column. 3 times negative 2 plus negative 2 times negative 3. And last, this row times this column, which gives me 3 times 3 plus negative 2 times 4. And so let's see what we come up with here. So this gives me negative 8 plus 9, which gives me 1. 12 minus 12, which gives me 0. Negative 6 plus 6, which gives me 0. And 9 minus 8, which gives me 1. And so notice I've came up with my identity matrix, specifically my identity matrix where I have a 2 by 2. And hence, this part of it has came up correctly. All right, but now I need to do the opposite way because matrix multiplication is not commutative. So I need to rearrange the order of these to take A times B. So this row times this column, which gives me negative 8 plus 9. This row times this column, which gives me 6 minus 6. This row times this column, which gives me negative 12 plus 12. And this row times this column, which gives me 9 minus and again, I have came up with the identity matrix. So this tells me that A is, in fact, the inverse of B, because when I multiplied them both directions, I came up with my identity matrix. Okay, so let's see if we can find an inverse on our own. So they gave us matrix A here, which is 2, 1, 0, 1. And we want to find the inverse of matrix A. And we're going to find this inverse by using that exact same property that we just discussed. A times A inverse equals 1. Equals I, or identity matrix. So let's set up this here. My A is this. I don't know what my inverse is. So let me just put in some letters there, A, B, C, D. And I know that this has to come up to be my identity matrix. And now all I have to use is matrix multiplication and matrix equivalency. So I need to set this up, multiply these two matrices over here on the left, and then actually set it equal to this here on the right. Okay, so. Here's the way it works. This row times this column is going to be my top left. So I have 2 times A plus 1 times C. Then this row times this column gives me 2 times B plus 1 D. Switching my rows here, this row times this column a 0 times A plus a 1C, and last but not least, this row times this column, a 0 times B plus 1D. And I know that that has to be equivalent to my identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. Well, if I'm talking about matrix equality, this has to equal 1, this has to equal 0, this has to equal 0, and this has to equal 1. So I can just set up each of those respective equations, and that's going to give me my A, B, C, D, and what my inverse matrix is going to be. So if I set these up, 2A plus 1C is equal to 1. 2B plus 1D is equal to 0. 0A plus 1C 
is equal to zero, and zero B plus one D is equal to one. Well, these last two equations are really going to make this easy for me because I had zero in this matrix, so it's going to be really, really easy. So here, of course, zero times A is just zero. So that tells me that C is equal to zero if I just solve this equation. Okay, same here with the last equation. If I were to eliminate that, that would tell me that D is equal to one. So now I can just substitute my C and D value back up in these two equations to figure out what my A and my B are. So if I have two times A plus one times C, where C is equal to zero, and that one's equal to one, well, that tells me that A is equal to one half. And here I have two times B plus one times D, where D is one, is equal to zero, or two B is equal to negative one. That tells me that B is equal to negative one half. And so that gives me all of my variables. And so now I can substitute it in here to tell me that my A inverse is equal to one half negative one-half, zero, and one. And if you don't trust your algebra, you can multiply A times A inverse to tell you that it gives you one, and you can multiply A inverse times A, and again, to confirm that that equals your identity matrix. So this example was really easy, right? We just need to use the properties of matrix multiplication and matrix equality to come up with our inverse matrix. But what happens if we have more complicated matrices where these equations aren't so nice to be able to figure out? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. It's how to find a matrix inverse when it's not so easy to set up in this format.